Welcome to the Dream Journal. From the studios of KSQD in Santa Cruz, the Dream Journal is a weekly show where we explore the power of nighttime dreams through conversations with dream experts and with listeners like you. So there's no those bottomless. Time is keenly found. A dream can be meaningful even if you don't know what it means. And today's music is called Teletherapy. How much teletherapy is now going on as we do, uh, as we do have learned to work from home. And uh, it can be a, a beautiful thing. We talk to people around the world. So what is projective dream work? Meet the hosts of the Healing Dream Project podcast, Billy Ortiz, Royce Fitz, and Viviana Guzman. We're going to talk about projective dream work, and then we're going to do it. I am your host, Catherine Bell of Experiential Dreamwork, and welcome to the Dream Journal. The Dream Journal is also a weekly podcast. You can subscribe, rate, and review. It really helps the algorithm teach uh teach it that uh we do like dreams you know everybody dreams and let's spread the passion of dreaming but really most importantly talk to your friends about the show i the mission of the show is to get folks talking about dreams so uh yeah give a chance maybe your friends are interested and you never knew it and they never knew you were interested in dreaming Archives are also available at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all those places. You can also find them on our own webpage at ksqd.org slash the dash dream dash journal. And much gratitude for K Squid for hosting us um, all these years. It's been five and a half years now. All right, we got three guests on. Uh, so let me get right to the guests. Viviana Guzman, are you there? Hi, good morning, yes. Catherine. Yes, wonderful. And then Royce Fitz. I am here. Excellent. I just want to say I am so grateful that we are invited to do this, Catherine. And, and in the realm of you can't make this stuff up, we, have, <laughs> we are being interviewed by a, a PhD in astrophysics. <laughs> True. <laughs> and, and, and we're joined by an international flutist and tarot reader. Yeah. And when Billy comes, uh, we will be with the famous <laughs> mythologist and dream projecting, dream, dream project worker, uh, projection worker with Billy. And, I'm and, and, can you hear me now? Please. Oh, is this Billy? Yes. I just had to reconnect. We, we have the whole team on. Mm -hmm. And Royce, thank you. I, I appreciate you highlighting um, us. And I also want to highlight you as a new author of your book, The Geography of the Soul. And let's also say Royce Fitz is a spiritual counselor, a dream worker, and an ordained minister with decades of experience as a clinical psychotherapist. So it is a pleasure to have you on the show, Royce. Thank you. I uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, let me say hi to Billy Ortiz. Uh, both Billy and Royce have been on the show before. It's great to get them together, and we'll add in Viviana in just a moment. Billy Ortiz is a certified dream worker and has over two decades of experience creating and facilitating dream groups, workshops, and retreats. She works online and in person in Colorado. You're in the Boulder area, is that right, Billy? That's right. Okay, yes. yeah, you so, always have so many uh, workshops whenever I go to your webpage, which is called wakeuptoyourdreams.com, <laughs> and it's, uh, um, there's so much that you do that you offer the world, and it's a pleasure to have you on the show yeah. again. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Excellent. And then our third guest is the fabulous Viviana Guzman. A Chilean-born flutist who has received a Grammy nomination and a Global Music Awards gold medal. Currently, Viviana teaches at the University of California, Santa Cruz. So, a local girl. So glad to have you on the show, Viviana. Thank you, Catherine, for having us. We're yeah. so excited about this. Good, good. So the three of, the, of these folks, Billy, Royce, and Viviana, have a podcast called The Healing Dreams Project, which has been going for several years. And um, it and in that, they actually do the work. They don't just talk about dreams. 
they take um, their guests, they invite their guests, let the guests talk a little bit, and then they and then they lay them out and say, what's your dream? <laughs> and, <laughs> and I was, uh, had the privilege of being on the show in February, and, uh, and I shared a dream, and I got to hear all of your wonderful, helpful projections about it. And so just they really give this wonderful example of what is projected dream work. So, you know, we're going to just trust that the three of you are used to being on the air together, and I'll, I'll ask a question, and I'll mostly just be out to the vapors, and, and whoever jumps in can be the one to answer and of course you can all weigh in and if you all talk at once so that's okay too <laughs> <laughs> okay so the, we, well, yeah, the challenge the challenge here is that usually we're doing video while we're recording uh, so we true. can usually see the raise of the eyebrow or the true, true. <laughs> the, the, the twitch of the hand like please it's my turn <laughs> but yeah it's true it's true without the video it is a little bit more uh, a little bit more difficult to figure out who's next <laughs> But I'm sure we'll be we'll be fine. We'll work it sure. out. So, um, so I wanted to start by asking the question: uh, What is projective dream work? And like, what? So, like, what does that even mean? Wow. Well, do you want me to go, Royce, or which Reviana? I'll go first. Uh, there we go. What is projective dream work? Well, projective dream work basically is a way to look at the dream by taking on the dream as your own. Mm. So in other words, um, when someone tells, tells us a dream, we only, our only option is to have an imagined version of that dream. Mm -hmm. It's like if you told me about your vacation, and in my mind, I'm visualizing your vacation, and I'm, that's my only option, because I didn't participate in the same thing. So mm -hmm. whenever we have a dream, and we share it with someone, and they have their imagined version of it, we like to, to foster the understanding that the we have to own the projection. We have mm -hmm. to say every time we make a comment, it's very different if I say, well, I think your dream, Catherine, means mm -hmm. that you, mm -hmm. instead of saying in my imagined version of this dream, I might think it means this, mm -hmm. and okay. then proceed forward because th then the work goes both ways. Then the dreamer has a chance to either take it or leave it, and if it doesn't resonate for them, fine. Uh, if it does, it's it's wonderful. And then, but the person making the comment has the chance to hear it as as they own the dream themselves too. So the, the so the projection goes out to the dreamer, but it also resonates inside when I hear myself saying "I." Mm, okay, so that brings us to the definition of a projection, which is a psychological term in this case. It doesn't have to do with movies or or something like that or spotlights, but. Um, maybe maybe we should have Royce jump in here and just tell us what yeah. is a projection in a psychological term. Well, I, I'm I'm going to explain it this way. Billy did a wonderful job. We cannot not project. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, we are related to the movie world because we have a movie projector going on inside of us, looking at the world outside of us all the time mm -hmm. and what that means is we can only understand the movie that's happening in front of us through our own deep understandings of life mm -hmm. and some of that may be conscious and lots more of it is unconscious so we move our movie camera around and look at the world we listen to other people we hear them speak we, we make opinions, we make guesses of what's going on outside of us. And no matter how well we do that, it's always a projection. We can't get away from it. Mm -hmm. And in the projective process, this is a way to say, you know what, let's just own this. Mm -hmm. Let's lovingly embrace this instinct that is called projection. And then if we own it, when we look at, listen to, experience others, we can also say, this is how I experience what's happening in front of me. Mm. And, and if I can also sneak in, I'm a shrink. I'm, <laughs> I, I, and, and so as I sound like I may criticize, criticize shrink world, <laughs> I, I'm doing it from the, with love from the inside. 
Because when someone goes to a counselor and they share a dream and then they're given an interpretation, mm. it's like it may be on target. Okay, that's good. However, it's still a projection from the counselor onto the dreamer. Mm. And when we say to the dreamer, well, in my projection, I, that frees the dreamer up to number one, hear us as an authentic human being struggling to make beauty and meaning in life. It also though gives room for the dreamer to not feel analyzed or interpreted about who they are. It gives them room to say, you know, I disagree or wow, that feels on target. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, so then the dreamer gets to be the focus of their own thoughts rather than feeling like they're being accused of the other person, like your dream means X one. <laughs> yeah, accused right. is a is a heart is a harsh and uh, accurate term. Yeah. 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 I want to get Viviana in here too. So what gets what do you what gets going how does this work for you, Viviana? What's first drew you in about this uh, projective dream work? Uh, what I love most about it is that I think dreams don't have just one meaning. Yeah. And by doing the collective projection on a dream, everyone can chime in what they think. And then the dreamer can assess whether or not they resonate what, with what is being said. And astoundingly, every time my dreams are being, you know, uh, projected by, on others, I always just grab so there's just so many, so much wealth and knowledge and uh it's it just it just resonates so much mm -hmm. collectively i can gather little bits from everyone that's what i love most about it and and every dream has uh i, I think is here to to show us something too or to has uh, something that we can learn from so i just love the whole process mm. okay well let's uh, let's start with viviana again and this time i'm curious about some specific techniques we have already heard the phrase you know if this were my dream or my projection on your dream and what what do you find that is helpful uh, as part of the process of projective dream work and let's start with viviana I think that the whole process is actually very simple, and it is just that. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's the main thing. And um, when I hear somebody projecting on my dream and they hear it as their dream, uh, well, if it were my dream, blah, 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 mm -hmm. um, all of a sudden it just lessens. Uh, and it, it just, it, I see it from a, instantly from a new perspective, from the speaker's perspective. Mm -hmm. So it is just that. Uh, if it were my dream, and it just, it, it, it really um, ha helps so much. It, it's a, such a small little thing, phrase to add mm -hmm. um, to an interpretation. But for me, I, I think it's everything. Right, right. And, you know, this brings us to uh, the, the way that you use projective dream work. You can definitely use it uh, in one-on-one. -on -one. If you're just ta chatting with somebody and, and someone tells you a dream, this is kind of, a dream manners you know to use your protocol to say mm -hmm. well if it were my dream it might mean something or tell me more about the dream and uh, and also can be very useful in groups like uh, people like to get together and talk about their dreams in groups and the projective dream work is is the perfect vehicle for that and it, and it eliminates friction or certainly minimizes friction between members because uh, because it's very gentle it's very uh, humble it's like well you know if it were my dream if if in my version of this dream, and then then the the dreamer gets to uh, take it however they want to. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's beautiful. So I, I'm I, I have some curious a little about the history of projective dream work. So I first ran across it in terms of Jeremy Taylor, um, and uh, I and uh, I believe uh, Billy is that your certification with uh, Jeremy Taylor's projective dream work? Yeah. Yes, I worked with Jeremy from. Gosh, and uh, the year 2000 until his death in 2018, mm. I worked with him consistently, um, inviting him in to co-facilitate uh, dream retreats with me. Um, and also, I every every month, once a month, I do my own work. I'd work right. on my own dreams yep. as well. Um, I think the original time, my understanding is that Montague Ullman was the first one to use if this were my dream. Mm -hmm. the, the Omen method is a little more rigid on how, on how and when to ask the questions and how to 
form the projections. Um, so, but from what I understand, Jeremy just sort of spontaneously had the uh, came with up with the idea when he was writing the book. Actually, it goes back to when he was doing community organizing and working with a group of people that were not meshing very well. And he figured out it by by sharing the dreams. Um, somehow everybody got on the same page. It was miraculous. Mm. And so that was his first experience. So that was way back in the 60s. And he was um, trying to get these people on, uh, you know, to, to communicate better with one another. And the If It Were My Dream was born there in his, ver in his work. <laughs> his um, version of <laughs> Projected Dream. Right, his, ver <laughs> his version of it. And then later he uh, read Monica Ullman's book and he was like, wow, you know, we had this collective unconscious idea you know right. um so it's um it's late later it, it started becoming more uh connected to jeremy over over time he never really was very comfortable with it being called taylor style dream work hmm. because he always would encourage each of us that studied with him to come up with our own version of it hmm. um to still stick with the guidelines of the projective method but find our own particular expertise. I mean, there's certain people I work with, for instance, that um, always see a level of health in, a, in dream work. This is something that's really important. Our dreams are telling, as Viviana mentioned, our, there's no such thing as a dream with only one meaning. Mm -hmm. So every dream is going to have that layer of relationship health and right livelihood and possibly some comments about our ancestors trying to, right. you know, what's even past life information can come through and one layer which is very helpful is to look at the 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 metaphors that are there that might be hinting at a possible health issue mm -hmm. so you know so for instance that's like that's an a, a, a play a, an area of dream work that someone could could uh, specialize in so so that's that's pretty much it. it's like you know do follow the guidelines of of the projected dream work but find your own niche and the mm. whole thing mm. that's interesting i had not heard that he was uh, encouraging people to find their own their own ways and uh, and i also love that he developed this uh, par in parallel with Ullman, this kind of a hundredth monkey kind of a thing it was time <laughs> idea whose yeah. time has come that's yeah. it. That's it. Very yeah. good. And so, Royce, you're a trained psychologist, and I don't think there's many psychologists that do a lot of work with dreaming, which is, which is uh, strange to me. I, I've heard this quote from Jeremy Taylor I, I do, that he thought that most psycho psychotherapists don't work with dreams because they're too rich. There's too much. <laughs> there's too uh, much. Right. <laughs> there's too right. <laughs> well, I, 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 thank you, and I mm. want to clarify a little bit. I'm. I, in the realm of the helping professions, there's a lot of different brands. I am not a psychologist. Oh. Mm -hmm. I do have a doctoral degree and it's in marriage and family therapy. And, and uh, you know, I just want to respect this broad uh, aspect of how many people are trained and are very willing to be with others as they go through their journeys mm -hmm. and seek healing. Yeah, and so my, uh, my understanding of dreams uh, comes out of this deep belief that dreams, just like projection, dreams are an instinct. And if it, now uh, uh, biologists and, and other scientific uh, studies have shown that it looks like in some form, all life forms seem to have something mm -hmm. in their own version of a dream and that that has an evolutionary aspect of life forms forming and reforming and developing. So when we look at dreams within us as humans, our species, I believe that dreams are deeply an instinct and we cannot remove them. We want to maybe dismiss them and yet we as a as a species will continue to dream mm -hmm. and part of what jeremy helped me understand and carl jung and others in the area of of, of the unconscious is that because we are all connected as life forms there seems to be a collective not just connected but we are there's a collection of all of this stuff that we call the unconscious and dreams in particular. And so dreams come 
for us as individuals and in a more beautiful sense, dreams come for us as a species and as a tribe, as a community. And as Jeremy ex experienced in his uh, community organizing efforts in Oakland so many years ago that uh, Billy lifted up, he, he saw the conflicts that you know normal people are having. And by his inviting people to share their dreams, they began to see commonalities in who they are and also a commonality in the sense of mission to bring healing to their communities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that, the, the communal aspect. There is something that's very innate about sharing dreams. Like you mentioned that uh, all animals that have been studied seem to dream, which I think is pretty amazing, or they have dreamlike interludes during their sleep. We can't really know exactly what they're experiencing. And yet, as far as we know, like spiders don't get together and talk about their dreams, <laughs> right? But maybe they do. I don't know for sure. But humans, it's like a real urge, like, oh, boy, I had the strangest dream last night, you know? Just one, one quick thing to insert here. There, there is a YouTube video of, a, of an octopus who is uh, dreaming and he continues to change color because, and they've, uh, you know, uh, surmised that he basically, he's what he's dreaming about is hiding in different parts of the ocean. And so he's changing the color of his skin based on where he's hiding. So if you can look this up, in, um, on YouTube, and I, I don't. Uh, if I find the link, I'll send it to you later. But it's but it's really fascinating to watch because he goes and he moves in different positions and then changes color, and he's asleep. Mm. So this is one of the <laughs> one yeah. of the like as as uh, Royce mentioned. You know, as far as we know, all living creatures dream. Right. Right. And so there's something very powerful about dreaming or we would have not be, you know, we, we would not be doing it uh, millions of years later after uh, life has evolved on Earth. There's something very powerful about it. And I want to talk a little bit about the, uh, uh, the podcast because you have the Healing Dreams Project is the name of your podcast. And, and the whole thing that I do on this show, too, is to talk about dreams. There's something that's really valuable about that. Um, and I wondered, um, like, what's... What gave you the idea to, to start a podcast? Uh, maybe Viviana would like to start jumping on this topic? Well, I... <clears throat> where do I start? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was in a near-death experience mm -hmm. in a car accident on Highway 1, mm. um, 50 miles an hour, head-on collision. Oh, oh my God. And uh, when I emerged out of that trauma, then I went into a pulmonary embolism, a second near-death experience, oh. and um, airlifted to Stanford Hospital. Mm. It was a... Anyway, after that, I had a, a, a very strong calling to continue dream work, and I had a physical... Uh, group in Half Moon Bay, but I, I wanted more, and I found Billy, and uh, joined her her dream groups, and I just thought I don't know I wanted to, I just wanted more of that in my life. It was a time where um, I had time. I was lying flat and recovering mm. from my accident and right. my embolism, and and I I was obsessed with it. And I and as a performer myself, and I have another a couple of other podcasts. Uh, and I'm interested in sound and all this. And I just thought why I invited, I thought she would be great to do a podcast. Mm -hmm. Yep. And yep. I could just produce it and work out all the details. And and then she invited Royce to join the the, the, the group. And that's how we, be, mm -hmm. we came alive. Oh, that's wonderful. I wonder if somebody would like to share a story about the podcast itself, like some particular insight somebody had. We have uh, a few more minutes before the break. And then after the break, I'd like to try to do a little projected dream work on either one of our dreams or a caller's dream. Um, but I wonder if somebody has a story about the podcast that they, they feel comfortable sharing on the air. Well, Royce and, Royce and Viviana were, were wonderful about sharing their dreams um, it with publicly. <laughs> and I was a little nervous about that, for, <laughs> right. to be Very honest, at the beginning. Yeah. But um, it is. And, it, but in, and, in, and the fact that it was just going, going to be, you know, syndicated everywhere. Um, so it, it took me a little while. But I once I did actually jump in and do a dream. 
uh, live and in person on the podcast. It was what the, the experiences were wonderful. And I wanted to let everybody know that um, we have a, 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 a large library of about, I think there's like 56 episodes nice. um, mm-hmm. that go back a couple of years. We've been on hiatus for a while, but, but the, we'll get back to it soon. <laughs> but, the, but, the, but please look up the library and you can find where I work, a dream and Viviana or, and Royce, each of us individually share our insights and, and vulnerability. Mm-hmm. And uh, then I was on the podcast in February and I <laughs> share a dream about the dream journal. As I recall, it was uh, one of my anxiety of about doing the podcast dreams mm-hmm. of which I have many. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's very intense. And, um, and we invite uh, the listeners to call in their own dreams yes. as well. So mm-hmm. whoever, you know, we're, we're not just looking for famous people like Catherine. Oh, <laughs> what? We're, we're open to, you know, the regular folks of our world because we so passionate, passionately believe that every dream is going to contribute to us toward our health, healing, wholeness, and wisdom. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's so true. And I, I know that Jeremy Taylor used to like to quote, I think it's Frederick or Ferenzi who would say, dreams are the workshop of evolution. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. This is where we as a human species are, are uh, exploring the future and, mm-hmm. uh, and, and trying out different ways of being in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Well said. Okay. All right, so we're going to take a short break, and then we'll be back uh, live in just a few minutes. So this is um, my guests today are Billy Ortiz, uh, Viviana Guzman, and Royce Fitz, all hosts of the Healing Dream, Healing Dreams Project podcast, and uh, we are talking about projective dream work. Uh, we are broadcast live from the KSQD studios in Santa Cruz and co-broadcast live in San Jose by KCXU after the break. We are going to uh, go into this experience, this idea of projective dream work, and uh, somebody's going to get a, a, a dream, a free dream session right now, as soon as we're done with our break. This is the Dream Journal. I'd like to welcome our far-flung listeners on the live stream. We have lots of local folks listening in. Uh, we also have Alameda, California, Oakland, California, Denver. People from Denver. We have Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. Welcome to you. And Ashburn, Virginia. Thanks for tuning in. Emmaus, Pennsylvania, and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So glad to have you tuned into the show. Next week, our guest will be psychotherapist Marilyn Mounsey, who treats women with acute stress disorder using what she calls dream psychotherapy. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook by following hashtag the dream journal. I always offer promotions about the upcoming show, and then you'll be the first to know when the podcast drops on Monday. So today we have three guests, the team from the Healing Dreams Project podcast, who are Viviana Guzman, Dr. Royce Fitz, and Billy Ortiz. Uh, So glad to have you on the show. And we've been talking about projective dream work. And and now in the second half of the show, we want to do a demonstration of the dream work. And um, let me say hi to my caller. Is it Julie? Is it right? Where are you calling from? Hi, I'm calling from Denver. Julie, thanks for calling. Hello, Royce, um, Billy, and Viviana. Hi, Julie. Hello, Julie. Hello. <laughs> Wonderful. So, so Julie, um, you've maybe listened to the show a little bit and know we're talking about projective dream work. Um, and uh, so do you have any questions before we get started? Do you want to go ahead and share your dream and uh, um, see where we go from there? Okay, um, I don't have any questions. I'm okay. going to start with the work. And Great. Hope. And, um, anyway, I had a dream on uh, the 30th, so maybe the 29th that evening. And um, there's a party outside, kind of like a picnic party, and Arrow and my granddaughter has two birthday cakes. They're both chocolate. 
one is large and one is a little smaller. And her stepdad, Teddy, is lighting the candles. And he's trying not to get burnt. They seem high flames. And I seem to be at this party, but in a way more of an observer, as just watching it from a window or from above. Um, there are a lot of members of my family there, the grandkids. It's, um, and then there are two couples sitting behind one of my daughters. They're in their maybe 40s, 50s. The woman looks kind of familiar, like somebody that I used to know. And she's sitting with a guy that has very dark hair. And he's staring at me as if he knows me. For some reason, it comes to mind that he's Native American, but I don't know why that is. Mm -hmm. And then the thing that really strikes me is that I see a bobcat emerge mm -hmm. um, in the middle of this crowd, and it's very beautiful with very golden fur and, you know, the speckles. And I call out and I say, look at the cat, and someone shoes the animal with a loud voice um, away. Uh, and it, it kind of, they kind of just disappear either over a hill or into the earth. And I also see um, raccoons among the group, which don't really bother me. Um, and then I hear that one of the couples, that a man has died from sun exposure. Sun exposure, and, okay. Mm. Yeah, and I'm trying to figure out which man it is and, and the dream. Mm. Wow. Okay. So a birthday party, trying to get the candles lit. Um, I'm just going to summarize a little bit so I can make sure I got the gist of it. Um, and then there's a man with dark hair staring at me, um, maybe Native American man. And I see a bobcat emerge from the crowd. And I say, look at the cat. And someone shoes it away. And somewhere, um, I, I, I believe a man has died from sun exposure. I tried to get the connection there. And, and there were, the, it was a birthday party for my granddaughter, and there were two, two keg, cakes, both chocolate. Is that correct? Right? Yes. Okay. And, okay. and one's bigger and one's smaller. Mm. Right. Okay. Okay. And then there's two couples, so two, two, two. Mm. Two cakes, mm -hmm. two yeah. couples. And have I, as the dreamer, have I ever encountered a bobcat? No, the only time I can remember, uh, you know, no, n not not in flesh, no. Okay, but and and how about raccoons? Is that have, are raccoons usually around my home and something I deal with no, often? Not. When we lived in New York, there were a lot of raccoons, um, but no, I, I haven't. Okay. And how do I feel about ra raccoons as the dreamer? Do I do consider them um, pests, or do I consider them cute and funny, or is there any, or somewhere in between? <laughs> normally, I would feel that you know they were raccoons would be threatening, but in this crowd, it didn't really bother me at all to see raccoons in this crowd. You know, yeah. like warm and fuzzy or something. Whereas when I first saw the bobcat, as beautiful as it was, I felt right. like a bobcat in this crowd. More threatening. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. God. Mm -hmm. A tiny little observation: two animals, the the bobcat and raccoon. Oh, right. Just to add to the two. Mm. There you go. Good one. Another Thank two. you. Thank you, Viviana. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so if I could just reflect a quick bit. Yeah. Uh -huh. What? What? Uh, number one, I love chocolate, and <laughs> it, I'm so happy two chocolate cakes, even though they're different sizes, showed up in my dream. <laughs> um, and my grandchildren or grandchild is celebrating this birthday, and 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 there's some very interesting pieces about all of this, and this is why dream work is so fascinating because as I in my dream create the dream, the flame kind of gets a little what I might consider risky or dangerous. Mm -hmm. And and so I, I, for me, a theme in this dream, in my projection, is that there is a kind of an expansive changing aspect of who I am and perhaps of others that I deeply know that, that there's this transition of birthday. There's this... Uh, the flame, which on one hand could be dangerous, on the other hand is kind of purifying, and also could be uh, making, uh, 
the the beginning of change you know how fire changes the landscape or metal or wood and so that transformative experience is there for me and and the the people that are in the dream in my projection some of them i probably know from the waking world some of them i don't and for me the ones i don't know and this is where i speak out of metaphor not necessarily literally but i i th i think the metaphor of these ones that i do not know are somehow representing uh, my ancestral energies and that they are attending and tending to this process, this transformative uh, initiation into a new aspect of my life. And then to see the, you know, the strangeness of the bobcat uh, walk in and, and, you know, that wild, undomesticated energy that mm -hmm. in a sense is ushering me to pay attention to that which is still wild within me. And as I change and transform, I want to, Im I, I'm being invited to embrace that because no matter what age I am, I, I have that ability to keep expanding and moving into areas that are not tame I'll stop right there. Mm. Mm. Beautiful, Royce. Mm. Very. Well, and Royce used the ter the word I was about to use too was undomesticated, because whenever we dream of animals, it's particularly wild animals, it's a reminder of our instinctual energies. And if it's a, that's why I was asking if if I as a dreamer had ever encountered a bobcat, because it'd be a bit of a different dream if I'd had some kind of specific you know uh, story of where I what really was threatened in waking life by a bobcat so this is a this is a undomesticated instinctual energies that's coming to me that's why i think that i'm not afraid of the raccoon because raccoons are a little more a little more tame in the sense that they're more used to humans and they're they they kind of in some ways rely on humans because mm -hmm. <laughs> they tend to go through our trash and things like that so there's so there's these instinctual energies that are coming to me, one of which I'm I'm more familiar with, one of which I'm still is very new. Um, but I lo love that Viana brought up again the twos because to, the twos do show up, two cakes, two couples, two animals. And whenever twos show up in dreams, I often think about something new that's coming to the surface. Um, some, it has to be seen as two first so that I recognize it, so that I pay attention. It's, it's more visible. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so I, you know, I wonder, I kind of want to check in with Julie. Like, what is, what is, what is this process like for you so far? Because we've been, you know, putting out a bunch of ideas and, uh, and I'm, you know, what's going on for you? Well, I, I find it very interesting because on um, the evening of the 28th, I went to this um, talk on energy and moving energies around with, with uh, sort of sacred geometry and stuff. And uh, I was very kind of moved by it and um, really sort of felt a difference. Mm. And, you know, um, and it's been on my mind a lot. So... You know, it, it was just been very interesting to hear what, like, Royce and Billy have to say about this natural energy, new energy, mm -hmm. you know, some kind of transformation, and, um, yeah. Right. Well, you, what, you're, what you're saying, Julie, kind of um, kind of brings up for me what one of the, the striking, the just two striking moments for me in this dream. If I'm thinking about um, living through this dream, there's a certain amount of, fuss i remember there was something about getting the candles lit there was some some kind of fuss about that but the but then there's this moment with a man with a dark hair staring at me i'm really curious about that and uh, and then the other moment is the bobcat emerging from the crowd like these two moments almost seem otherworldly there's something there mm -hmm. but but let's go back to the man and 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 i you know i do, I do what is not quite a projective dream work i like to ask a lot of questions <laughs> which is um <laughs> So I, I can I, can I ask you what is it 
feel like when that dark man is staring at me? Is, it, is there any sense of threat or is there a sense of attraction or a little bit of both or curiosity or just There's nothing? No sense of threat. There's a sense of um, almost like a knowing or maybe an attraction. Uh-huh. Um, it's like a connection. I, you know, a connection. Mm. Definitely no sense of threat. Okay, so a little like, something there. Like, I know this person, but I don't. Or mm-hmm. And that ties in with what we've been saying about the uh, the wild nature, because the Native American you know, people, I, my kind of stereotype of that is someone who's closer to the land and has more groundedness and connection to, to nature. And so there's maybe some th- part of that that I feel connected to. And then, and then here comes this bobcat talk about a wild mm. part of my nature emerging from the crowd among all these people yeah <laughs> uh, that, that's an amazing moment wow and uh, and i'm like look at the cat but then in the dream as somebody shoes it away and like what does that feel like for you julie like to see the cat number one and then also to have it shooed away well i thought it could be dangerous I, it, it was it was a kind of a um Push pull, you know, I felt it could be, it was so beautiful, but I almost felt like it could be dangerous and proud with children. That's mm. how I felt in the dream. Mm. Kind mm. of like contradictory in mm. a way. Sure. Um, but that the, it's the image of the bobcat that sticks with me more than anything. Uh, yeah. The and the man. The bobcat and the man. Yeah. So there's something about this these emerging creatures the, the the connection with the man and the and then the the wildness the cat right there which is scary both scary and attractive of the, yeah, of the cat yeah, exactly good point mm, and then i yeah i for me i'm thinking if it's my dream the the person who shoes away the bobcat like part of me is i'm partly grateful to that person and yet also i'm kind of wanted to maybe see the cat a little more so that is that the part of me that runs away from from mm. the uh the wild part of myself. Is there a part of me that yeah. shoes away that my own wildness? Yeah, that could be. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, I, well and, it, and this is how it works. You know, yeah. I got a huge aha from that uh, yeah. in my version of it. This <laughs> so it's like it, I could feel, I felt tingles all over when, when Catherine said that. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, this, this it, I think that Viana was going to say something. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, I'll, I'll just uh, chime in quickly. Yeah. Um, talk about twos. I, the twos for me are very, I, I have some observations, well, of the overall themes, and they're like paradoxes or, or contrasts. Mm-hmm. So uh, for me, the first point would be observation and connection. I'm an observer in the dream. Um, I might feel detached from the events. Uh, reflecting from a distance, maybe. Um, And at the same time, there's a presence of familiar figures like the raccoon or Mm. animals that I'm familiar with um, and these mysterious elements sort of maybe suggest to me a a search for an understanding or a connection with deeper parts of my life. Um, And a second theme throughout the whole, if this were my dream, uh, I, I would choose like a, a, a the difference between wildness and control, or and so the contrast between being controlled by the environment or the person lighting the candle, a trusted elder um, making sure that no one gets burned, and the wildness of the animals that come in. There's like a tension between the sus, like the the expectations and natural instincts or desires. Um, uh, there might be like a, a str- maybe a struggle in my life between maintaining order and at the same time embracing mm. known and unknown, untamed, tamed aspects of myself, mm-hmm. if this were my dream. Yeah. I would like yeah. to say amen to that. <laughs> yes. that yes. I, I get my goosey bumpies on this <laughs> because this dream feels like an introduction to my expansion and change. And again, I look at aging, you know, in my process, this is a birthday party. Mm, I've been mm, studying stuff that I'm not familiar with, which I really don't know what sacred geometry is. Uh, However, it's something that attracts me and expands me 
with lots of questions. And so I feel like this is the dream, one dream of many to come because I am encountering the who I am as I know myself, my ego self, uh, and I'm kind of watching this. And then I'm experiencing the possibility of change into untamed, unknown areas of who I am. And the, if this is an, a, a, an indigenous person, I feel like that there, and this is such a projection, that there's kind of a, a shamanic call to me yeah. to look at my roots and to also look at my wildness and the uncontrolled, as yet un, uh, unknown side of me. So I feel like this is a beginning of many dreams that I need to pay attention to, that I am moving toward a new phase in my life. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, love that. that definitely resonates. I mean, oh, it's, it's yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything that, <laughs> that you, Royce, have, and, and Brianna, you know, going deeper into it and Billy, you know, yeah. Julie, thank you so much for calling. I found this very oh. rich experience, and thank you for sharing your tender dream. It's and, beautiful. And I hope okay, it is thank you all. the first of thank many you, interesting emerging dreams. Yes. Okay. All right. Thanks for sharing your dream. All right. Bye-bye, you guys. Bye now. Okay, so yeah, there's something about uh, this projector dream work that I love that I get to have that dream like as my own, like I can, mm -hmm. in my own version of the dream, I'm, I can picture the bobcat emerging from the crowd and the, and the man's face looking at me, because uh, I'm kind of an observer, but then here's this man looking right at me, so I'm not an observer <laughs> after all, actually. <laughs> like, I think that, you know? yeah, that was great what Viviana brought up, the paradox yeah. of what goes out through the whole dream. Mm -hmm. So we are, uh, what, what else? We just have a few minutes left in the show. Radio, you guys, your freewheeling podcast get to go on as long as you like, but we have a clock to watch. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. But what, what do we, what is, um, what is needing to be said? Maybe we'll just, we'll go through the three of you one at a time and, and, uh, and you can uh, offer just some, some what's up for you right now. And um, Billy, why don't you start? It sounds like you're kind of ready to talk. Oh, well, sure. I'm always ready to talk. <laughs> just, you know, just ask anybody that knows me. It might be one of the reasons why the podcast goes a little longer than an hour. <laughs> anyway, the, um, well, you know, I, um, I, I think we've, we've expressed, all of us have it here have expressed our love for projective dream work. It truly, it, I mean, I do this work so often and I've done it for over 20 years now. And I, and I can tell you that I've never, ever disappointed in a dream. And I, I've never met a dream I didn't like, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. a lot of times we throw our dreams away. We uh, say, why, why even bother recording it? Um, and I have to uh, confess, that's, I've done that myself as well. Yeah. So let's try, you know, I just encourage everybody listening that, you know, try to take the time mm -hmm. to at least write your dream down. And if not that then share it with somebody over coffee or, you know, a coworker during break, whatever. Um, it, it's, it's important enough. And I think, I think every dream wants to be shared, needs to be shared. Right, right. And that's another big piece of it. Cause I, Billy, uh, I, I, cause I was in, <laughs> in my version of myself, I, <laughs> I, I, uh, that's one of the things that keeps me going. It not only helps the individual uh, evolve and change, but it helps us as a as a, a group, a community, as as humanity to ev evolve. Um, so I'll just quickly put a real short plug in here. I have a retreat coming up in Boulder, October 11th through the 13th. It'll be my 31st retreat. Oh, wow. um, I um, love the work so much because uh, we build a small village and get to know each other over the weekend. And there's other activities too. It's not just dream work. Um, you know, we there's a, a lake and places to walk very close around. And plus, we also have uh, music and poetry included. So, uh, and I'm available as you mentioned before. WakeUpToYourDreams.com. Wonderful. Um, so, Thank so contact me anytime. Thank you, Billy Ortiz. 
And then uh, Viviana Guzman, local local lady. Maybe we'll get you into the show, get your own dedicated show, as what Billy and Royce have already had. Thanks so much for being mm. on the show. Any, any real quick uh, finding, uh, final parting comments? I think uh, Billy summed it up perfectly. Uh, I wanted to thank you again, Catherine, for having me, and I'd love to come back anytime. Great. Okay. And yes, in the studio. I'd like. Yes, I right. Come to the mm-hmm. <laughs> Excellent, Viviana Guzman. Um, and then oh, my website. Yes, I'll please. just say my website is viviana.org, mm-hmm. and for my healing tarot astrology, it's viviana. V I V I A N A dot O R G backslash magic. Magic. Okay. I'll put the links on the page. And then um, Dr. Royce Fitz, uh, author of the geolo- ge- geom- Geography of the Show of the Soul. <laughs> I'll get it right. The Geology. <laughs> uh, geography. I'll get it. Dang. Geology of the Show. The I Geology of the Soul. <laughs> Geol- now one. everyone will remember this for sure. The geol- oh, oh. <laughs> Geography <laughs> of the Soul. New book out. And we had him on the show a little while ago uh, to talk about that book and just super quick last comments from you Royce please well I I think I should just be quiet because you gave me a (laughs) big plug just by all of that (laughs) with with all of the people that I know and love they know that I love dreams and they get eye rolls sometimes I get eye rolls from them because when a dream is mentioned it's like, what, what, you know, why do you want to do that, Royce? And I just believe dreams are so core in us. I'm passionate about that and that they are a part of our evolution. And whether we pay attention to them or not, they are our best friend love it. On, That's our, it. on our inside. So thank you. Thank so you. Much. Yes. My website is Royce. Fits.com. F-I-T-T-S. Yep. That's correct. And Catherine, you're so generous and it's so lovely to be with you again. And your podcast and radio program is wonderful. And I love the music that you always huh. have. And uh, I wanted to give Thanks, uh, a Rick shout Cleffel. out about that. Yeah, yeah <laughs> excellent. Who also engineers the show. Thank you, Rick. Mm. Wonderful. Thank you so much for all for being on the show. This has been a fabulous adventure. And thank you all for listening. The Dream Journal is produced at the studios of KSQD in Santa Cruz, and we are live every Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific at ksqd.org in case you'd like to call in, find out what goes on behind the scenes. We are released, the podcast is released on the Monday after the show. It spreads interest in dreaming when you subscribe, rate, and review. Contact me if you'd like to be a guest on the show or to promote a new book to tell folks about your dream-related offerings. My name is Catherine Bell, and you can find about my dream coaching at experientialdreamwork.com. Follow me at hashtag the Dream Journal on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks to Rick Kleffel and Eric Nelson. Intro and outdoor pieces are by Mood Science. Tomorrow morning, when you wake up, take a minute to write down your dream and bring it to the next dream journal. Never exist.